Hey guys, Muslim Minds, we have another video that we're going to be reacting to called Orthodox versus Catholic. What is the difference? Animation 13 plus. <laughs> so we're going to get some good animations. So yeah. Christians still comprise the largest religious group in the world, representing nearly a third of the total global population. But do all Christians think the same? Let's study the past to understand this. The Roman Empire was split in 395 AD. Christianity became the official state religion of the Roman Empire, both East and West. Let's try to understand what their differences are. Difference number one, a Pope figure. Probably the biggest and most obvious difference between the Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. Just really quick, I'm not trying to trigger anyone, but uh, I have a really f funny joke. One of my friends, he's a Catholic. Um, he, I asked him one time, I was like, what's the difference between Catholicism and Orthodoxy? He said, well, the Orthodox are just Catholics with beards stuck in the past. <laughs> okay is that the Orthodox Church doesn't have a Pope figure. For Roman Catholics, the Pope is not only supreme, that is to say he has immediate jurisdiction church in the whole world. In 1870, the First Vatican Council strengthened the central position of the papacy by means of its dogmatic definition of papal primacy. The Roman Catholic Church is considered the center of Catholicism. The Orthodox Catholic Church has no central doctrinal or governmental authority. It considers Jesus Christ to be the head of the church. Patriarchs, Metropolitans, and Achimandrites cover certain points of administration. Difference number two, asceticism and fasting. I wonder why Orthodox have this opinion when, from the early traditions, um, Jesus ordained Peter as the rock of the church. So kind of ordaining him as the first pope in a way. Yeah, I heard that too. So why... Why, if, not, why not have a figure? Why not have And like if a Jesus leader? is the head of the church... And that just means basically they don't follow any person. They just have follow what they believe in their own interpretations. Yeah. Because the Catholics follow the Pope and they see him as a leader. Orthodox, they don't see anyone as a leader. Basically. Well, I guess both in a way are following their own interpretations. One just has a leading figure and the others have like more just strictly a council. Okay. Interesting. It used to be that Roman Catholics had them a moderately rigorous fasting tradition. Now, largely speaking, the only obligation for most Catholics is that you don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent only. The Orthodox Christian, who is really following what's expected of us, we end up fasting almost half the days of the year. Wow. Difference number three, I can ask. Didn't know that. That's, well, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Christian fasting is a bit different from Islamic fasting. They don't abstain from everything like food and drink. They abstain from certain items like meat, for example, is what he said. So yeah, and then yeah. there is some days they don't fast for like a day. I know Christians that um, I don't know exactly if anyone knows, comment down below. But yeah, for Muslims, our oblig obligatory fast is in Ramadan, where we fast for a, a month, the month of Ramadan, which is 29 to 30 days. And also, I believe an interesting thing is in the Bible, Jesus fasted for 40 days, right? So something Jesus did that also something Muslims do too. So, yeah. When one walks into an Eastern Orthodox church, one of the first things a non-Orthodox person will notice is a large screen of iconostasis at the front of the nave or auditorium. This often beautiful structure is not merely decorative. It serves an important purpose within the Orthodox system by marking off the boundary between the common area and the sanctuary. Orthodox priests pray over the elements on the altar, which is located in the sanctuary behind the iconostasis and therefore set apart from the congregants. Difference number four, icons. Another thing one is quickly struck with when walking into an Orthodox church is the pervasive presence What's going on with my animated guy's head? <laughs> ...use of icons. Of However, the icons in an Orthodox church are usually quite different from those found in Roman Catholic churches. Within the Orthodox tradition, Religious imagery is carefully controlled and for the most part is produced on a flat surface using paint or something similar. Difference number five, the involvement of the children. Orthodox Christian babies are fully engaged in the whole life of the congregation so. sacramentally. <laughs> Roman Catholic children are baptized, but they can't fully participate until later, around seven to eight years. For those who didn't and I know, think the reason behind this is because the Catholics want their adherents or followers to be educated, which I... I, I can see where that thinking comes from. You don't want your followers to be ignorant of the faith because you are then a representative of the faith. And especially with something as important as the church and Catholicism, where it's kind of like one body 
I can definitely see why that is the case. Interesting. No, Eastern Christians make the sign of the cross from the right shoulder to the left, while Western Christians make the sign of the cross from the left shoulder <laughs> to the right. Difference number six. The Russian Orthodox Church possesses the power to forgive sins, where there is true repentance and sincere confession. Roman Catholicism teaches that the treasury of merit, the store of good works belonging to Christ and the saints, is placed under the charge of the Pope, who possesses the power to dispense merit through what are called indulgences. These indulgences not only bestowed pardon for sins committed already, they were used to license the commission for future transgressions as well. Difference number seven for Roman... So yeah, indulgences are something we encountered in the past and in some of our comments. And it did seem, to my understanding, a little bit corrupt because basically you're buying um, like the erasing of your sins and then you're, you're giving the church money so then your future transgressions don't count. So that just seems pretty strange yeah i agree seems a little odd yeah i think to be honest it, there are some views of it that are going to be portrayed in a certain light that may not be fully representative of what it is i need to do more research into indulgences but i don't think it's as simple as a get out of jail card that you just buy yeah as i mean some people portray it to be the video basically <laughs> said that. yeah yeah so well, i think most videos we've seen so far made it sound like that yeah so if anyone knows, leave in the comments below. And anything I've read, same thing. In Catholics, kneeling is one of the most distinctive physical gestures of praying during the celebration of Mass. In the Orthodox Church, people make prostrations or full bows to the ground. Difference number eight. Although Eastern Orthodox do not normally bless themselves with holy water, like the Catholics well, do. Well, I've seen Catholics one... also do a full gesture on the ground, planking. <laughs> yeah. And as Muslims, we prostrate. It's called sajda, prostration. Yeah. So... I guess they all kind of do it in their own way. Though Eastern Orthodox do not normally bless themselves with holy water like the Catholics do, a quantity of holy water is typically kept in front of the entrance of the church, where it is available for anyone who would like to take some of it home with them. Difference number nine. In general, Orthodox Christian priests and monks wear long beards and Roman Catholics do not. <laughs> he was right. Difference number ten. The veneration of relics in the Catholic Church... Just quickly... Is there a certain belief why they have longer beards? Is it something in the Bible or what? Not, if you don't. Probably, I don't want to quote out of ignorance because I'm not aware of a verse kind of highlighting the importance of having a beard, but it's probably something rooted in their tradition. Yeah, yeah for us as Muslims, there is like a sunnah or like an encouraged thing to have a beard. It's yeah. something the Prophet And that's Muhammad in our tradition. So some did, but just interested if anyone knows why the Catholics, they look like the figures have no beard at all, clean shaven and Orthodox have beards. Maybe just something to do with culturally. I don't know. Church is an ancient tradition. Jesus' clothes, remnants of the cross on which Christ died, nails with which he was nailed to the cross, etc. Well, these are all heavily disputed. Things like the Shroud of Turin or even pieces of the true cross. There are so many supposed pieces of the true cross. Now, you could probably make like 500 crosses out of those pieces of the true cross. Or there are so many nails. It's like you could... I mean, it's like a whole sea of nails at this point that people, because there's a period in time in which this became like a popular tactic to make sales. People would claim to have these kind of I, like religious items. So it's it's kind of hard to determine which. To verify if it's yeah, real. To verify which mm -hmm. of these artifacts are actually real. As well as the veneration of martyrs, saints, and blesseds. Difference number 11. Orthodox priests are divided into two distinct groups the white or married clergy, and the black or monastic. In the Catholic Church, clerical celibacy is the discipline by which only unmarried men are ordained to the episcopate. That was an abrupt ending. What the differences seem so minor. Yeah, I mean, I, w I wish they put like proofs on why it's different. Like, why are they different? We still don't know. It's just like they are different. I so. think it's all rooted in culture and tradition. Yeah, if we get the chance, we definitely maybe need to find another video on this because it presented the differences, but not why it's different. If it's something in the Bible, why they believe it. Maybe it's culture and tradition, like you said. But I think the main point of contention or difference is regarding the Pope. And I think they should have flushed that out more because I think like the Pope having a state of infallibility, invoking infallibility. Again, not that he's constantly infallible. I'm aware that's not the case. But the fact that there's an element of this to him and that whatever um i think they actually did mention in the video it's called no they didn't 
I'm forgetting. But I wish they fleshed that out a bit more. I think that's kind of like the ma major point of contention right there. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Any feedback you have uh, for us or any way you guys can educate us, leave it in the comments. We'd be very happy to learn more about the differences. If there are Catholics and Orthodox Christians watching the video, please, we would be very interested for you guys to specify in your own words what differences there are so we can read on them a little bit more from you guys, from your perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other reactions you guys want us to see? Also, please leave in the comment sections below. And assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.